All right, so I've always had a thing for words. In high school, I used to make the people carpooling with me actually bring in words to discuss during the morning ride. And in university, I plastered word of the day signs all over the campus. So today, I want to share my favorite part of words, which is their origins. All right, so some starter knowledge. Uh, basically, just like animals, languages evolve and become new languages. Now, linguists then classify languages into different families and identify a root or a proto-language for each family. There are 94 language families in the world and over 6,900 currently spoken languages. The English language comes from the Germanic branch of the Indo-European family, the most spoken language in family in the world. Uh, and language is kind of like a species, but instead of the ability to interbreed, you have the ability to understand everybody else in that language. Uh, but you guys might have trouble understanding me I compared to native Aussies because of something called dialects. So a dialect is still mutually intelligible but might differ a bit in other aspects. So for example, actually my dialect is more different to yours than the southern US dialect and that's why I say Fisher and you guys say Fisher. Um, now, just like some people or everyone thinks that we all evolved from one amoeba, some linguists think that every language came from one language, language, and they look to find examples of this by finding similar words with similar meanings, but it's almost impossible to prove. So we may not ever figure out if we all came from one language, and we may argue over whether Australian deserves to be its same language, uh, but uh, <laughs> it's clear that languages have influenced each other a lot over time, and I want to talk about that. All right, so first of all, they influence each other in the obvious way. A child language gets words from its parent language and then maybe slightly modifies it over time. For example, word comes from Proto-Germanic wordin, which comes from the Proto-Indo-European root where, meaning to speak or to say. But there's more an interesting type of influence called borrowing. Languages borrow from each other during invadings, colonizations, and typically borrow words from like the invading countries, animals, uh, food, stuff like that. Um, and these borrowed words are then called loan words. So a word is composed of both its meaning and its spelling. And when it enters a language, both of these may stay the same or may diverge. Example, the French word cafe stayed completely the same. Music spell changed in spelling and bouger changed from meaning small leather purse to our modern meaning. Now, English has a bit of a reputation for borrowing. About 75% of our words <laughs> come from other languages. Best quote ever. <laughs> Uh, you could almost think that we're romantic in vocabulary and Germanic in syntax. So we're a bunch of romantic drunks. So let's see how English borrows. <laughs> so a familiar example, verb. Verb comes from the old French verba, which comes from Latin verbum, which shares the same Proto-Indo-European root as word. So word and verb are in fact cognates, words that share the same root. Now when a word, when two words in the same language have the same root, but enter through different routes, these are called doublets or etymological twins. This often happens when a language borrows from another one at two different points in history and happen a lot with words with Latin roots. So sometimes we borrow from way outside our family, right? So we get the word T from Dutch traders in south of China who heard one pronunciation of that symbol. But 40 other languages got the word cha from Portuguese traders who heard the other pronunciation and cha later re-entered as chai and now we know it at Starbucks. Now, since English, <laughs> since England's not very good for growing fruits, we have a lot of our fruit names from other languages. So orange trees first started growing in China, Indians started the word, and then it traveled through six languages before finally coming to us and becoming the unrhymable word. Sometimes we get confused when we borrow a word. So when Dutch people heard Malays refer to orangutans in the woods, they thought they meant those funny looking hairy orange apes, when in fact they meant the native tribesmen. But now we will always refer to these apes as orangutans, meaning wild man of the woods, which actually fits pretty well. Now, usually when you borrow a word, you never take it back, or whatevs. So, <laughs> so loan word is a misnomer, right? But sometimes it happens. So basically, English took beef from French, added steak, and then French liked it, took it back, beef steak. All right. So, the reason I love all this is because once you learn the origin of a word, you understand the origin of other words, and suddenly you gain this whole new perspective on this meaning. So let's work through this one. Mirror comes from Latin mirari to wonder at, the Latin root miris, wonderful. Miris itself ended up in a lot of derivatives in its own language and many other ones. So we got miracle, marvel, mirage, admirer, and we also got the girl's names Miranda and Mirabelle. So now you have an excuse for baby making tonight. <laughs> 
Now, if we go even further up the tree at the Proto-Indo-European root for Miris, we see Sme, which became Smila in Germanic, which became Smile in English. So the next time that you smile while looking at yourself in a mirror while admiring a miracle, you, <laughs> you can thank your Proto-Indo-European parents and invaders. So if you're now inspired to learn more about words, you subscribe to podcasts or RSS feeds for Word of the Day. If you're curious anytime, look up a dictionary, trace a word back. You never know what wondrous marvels you'll find. Yeah.